Okay, let's take a look at paper one from June in 2019. We're going to start with question one. Obviously, that's your equations and inequalities. Always simple algebra in question one. So let's take a look. 1.1 is always just solve for x. So 1.1.1, we have a simple quadratic equation, very easily factorized. Guys, I'm not even going to go through this. It's x minus 6, x plus 1 equals 0. And now remember, product zero theorem, if a, b is equal to 0, then a is equal to 0, or b is equal to 0. That's where this comes from. So x is equal to 6, or x is equal to negative 1. Easy, easy peasy. 1.2 gives us this whole long situation and it says correct to two decimal places. Guys, when you see correct to two decimal places, always remember that that is probably going to mean that you need the quadratic formula. If you can't factorize nicely, you're going to get some ugly decimal places. So first, we need to have that is equal to zero. This equation isn't. So let's multiply out the brackets. 3x multiplied by x is 3x squared minus 1x minus 12x is minus 13x and negative 1 multiplied by negative 4 is positive 4. Okay, so now I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides and we have it equal to 0, standard form. Okay, so now we need to simplify this out and 4 minus 16 is minus 12. Okay, so now remember guys, your quadratic formula x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and that's all over 2a. Okay, so remember this is a, that's b and that's c, but also very important that negative is attached to that coefficient. Okay, so the signs are very important. So x is equal to minus b which is 13 plus or minus negative 13 squared minus 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by negative 12 and that's all square rooted over 2 multiplied by 3. So now we can simply stick this into our calculator. I'm going to say 13 plus the square root of negative 13 squared minus 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by negative 12 all over 2 multiplied by 3 and we get 5 comma 1 2 remember two decimal places now the second one comes from when we subtract so you go up delete that plus add in a minus and we get negative 0 comma 7 8 okay easy peasy just remember your quadratic formula 1.1.3 is an inequality okay so guys what you're looking for immediately in this one is the fact that it's a quadratic so if I rewrite it in its standard form I get this expression so first thing you need to do is find the critical values because it's an inequality okay so what they're asking you to recognize here is because this is a negative it's going to be a downward facing parabola and they're asking where this parabola sits above that's what that greater than it means or intersects with the x-axis because remember when y equals zero that's the x-axis so they're asking you to find if this is the x-axis where this graph intersects it and where it lies above it so it's this entire section over here okay so if I factorize to find the critical values I'm going to take out a negative x so we get x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0 and that means that our critical values are x equals 0 from here we're going to have negative x is equal to 0 and therefore x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 4 from this expression here okay so we know that the x-intercepts of this parabola are at 4 and 0. So that means that this parabola goes right through the origin there. This is y. Okay. So now we know that x is greater than or equal to 0 between 0 
and 4. Okay. Remember, if you look at your inequality, we have a greater than or equal to. So it needs to be the same in your answer. Okay. So the parabola lies on or above the x-axis between 0 and 4. Okay. You can also plot your timeline and have 4 there, 0 there. And know that x is going to equal, or y is going to be, 0 there and 0 there. Okay? That's the value. You're going to have a closed dot here. y equals 0 here, and y equals 0 here. Okay? And if you substitute in a number, so if I substituted negative 1, I know that my parabola would be negative over here. And if I substituted in 5, my parabola, again, is going to be negative. If I substituted, let's say, 2, my parabola is going to be positive. So I know that these values here, from 0 to 4, are the values of my x. So that is your answer over here. Okay. And then lastly, 1.1.4. We've got this whole expression, okay, so what they're looking for you to see is here in the numerator, if I have x squared minus 1, I can easily factorize it, it's difference of two squares, hope you agree with me. Here we have 5x squared minus 1, so again it's a difference of two squared, this whole thing is squared, that's how you get 5, 2x, 5 to the power of 2x, so if I factorize the numerator, get 5 to the power of x minus 1, 5 to the power of x plus 1. And that's all over the same denominator. Okay, so if I look at this expression, I know that this entire denominator will divide into this factor of the numerator to give me 1. So that means I have 5 to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 4. Okay, so now if I add 1 to both sides, I get 5 to the power of x is equal to 5. And now we have the same bases. So, if 5 raised to the power of x is the same as 5 raised to the power of, there's a, a, an invisible 1 there, we know that x is equal to 1. Okay, so that is question 1.1.